are honored to have the Progressive Institute of Health, Education, and Training, Ms. Barbara White, and also our speaker today, Mr. Al Brown. And he's going to come to us and share firsthand information and experiences related to prostate cancer. So without further ado, so that we can get all of the richness that Mr. Brown has to offer, I'm going to ask him to come forth and he can tell you a little bit more about himself and how, how this seminar is going to proceed from here. Okay? So let's give it all. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Good. As Dia said, my name is Al Brown, and I'm a health, aware, uh, health awareness consultant working with health, Progressive Institute of Health, Education, and Training. And today we're going to talk about prostate cancer and prostate health, something that we all hear about, but most of us don't pay much attention to, as with <coughs> most things about our health, until we get stricken with it we don't really have a lot of attention paid towards those things unless we go and get certain screenings early and things like that. But what we're going to do first, we're going to show you a video and it'll explain to you something about prostate cancer. I mean, let me see the hands of those of you that know what the prostate is. Okay. Okay, now, and out of the room of, say, 35, 40 men, maybe eight men know what prostate is, maybe 10, maybe 15. Still bad, because as a man, if you don't know what your prostate is, you don't understand the impact it can have on you, your lifestyle, and your life. So today we're going to make sure before you leave here, you'll not only know what a prostate is, where it's located, what the functions of it are, but then the problems that can arise when you start having problems with your prostate. First of all, the prostate is a gland that's located between the rectum and the bladder. It's about the size of a walnut for most of us here now. As an adolescent, children start out with a prostate being about the size of a nickel. And as men grow older, the prostate starts to enlarge. It can enlarge up to the size of an orange. Yeah, if I said, I said it right, the size of an orange. From a nickel to an orange. Going right between the prostate is the urethra. The urethra is where the urine flows. And what happens as men grow older, the prostate starts to enlarge. And when it enlarges, it begins to squeeze the urethra. And that's when you might start having some of the symptoms like urinary flow problems or burning sensations. Sometimes you'll have experienced blood in your urine or your rectum, but it's all because of the prostate beginning to enlarge. That condition is called benign prosthetic hypertrophy. You might not remember that, you might want to write it down, but the main thing, they call it BPH. And when you hear the, the term BPH, that's talking about an enlarged prostate. Black men are at the highest risk of any man in the entire world. Okay, you hear me? Black men have the highest risk of prostate problems and cancer of any men in the world at a rate of about twice as much as white men. Why is that? I'll get to that. Um, if you had a father, brother, grandfather, anybody in your family that had prostate cancer, then that puts you at a higher risk because you're, you have a genetic link to the disease. Our diet, it's been found out that 90% of the prostate cancer is directly linked, directly linked to our diet. Ninety percent. It's kind of like with high blood pressure and hypertension and heart disease and other things. The foods that we eat, what we put in our bodies is what's going to dictate the condition of our body. So prostate cancer is the same thing. Uh, if you have a, a high level of fatty foods, meats consumptions, you're not eating enough green vegetables and intake, then those are things that help to counter the uh, prostate cancer. They won't stop it. There's been nothing proven that stops prostate cancer at this point. But because of our diet, we tend to put ourselves at a higher risk. Um, I'm going to go on and put the video on and give you more information about the prostate and give you a chance to finish filling out your forms, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about my journey. In
In October of 2008, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So as a person who has prostate cancer currently, who has gone out and done my research, found out everything that I can about prostate cancer, every day I go on the internet, I'm on the telephone, I'm finding out everything that I can about what's going on inside my body. It's more important than getting my hair cut, more important than washing my car, more important than walking my dog or going to the club. Nothing else is more important in my life at this moment than making sure that my life continues. And what I'm here today to do is to share that information with you brothers and hopefully, if you have not been screened, if you don't have prostate cancer, if you have prostate cancer, maybe we can learn about getting screened, finding out about the treatment options, going and find out what it takes to find out where your stages are so that you can do something to save your life. I'm sorry, one in six men. In other words, out of you six brothers sitting here today, one of you will have prostate cancer in your lifetime. One out of six will have prostate cancer in your lifetime. The good news is that only one out of 35 will die from it. One out of 35. Those are some great odds. Okay, if, you had, if you're going through the tracks and you had a 35 to one odds, you'd be in, in good shape if your horse came in. So reverse that, one out of 35 will die from it. When you hear about men dying from prostate cancer, it's, it's equivalent to taking a gun, putting a bullet in it, and putting it to your head, and shooting yourself in the head. It's, it's equivalent to committing suicide, because that means that you did not get screened. That means that you did not pay enough attention to your body to go and let the doctor jab that finger in your rectum between, and test that little gland to see whether or not it's in good order, because that's the beginning part of it. You go and it's called a DRE, the Digital Rectal Exam. You gotta go get that Digital Rectal Exam to start with. It's uncomfortable, it's humiliating, it's, you know, some people may say it messes with your manhood and all that other nonsense, but if you don't go get it done, it'll take your life. Okay, so today, hopefully I can impact you brothers with my own personal experience and let you know about prioritizing what's important, either living or feeling proud about being a man and not letting nobody put their finger in your butt or whatever it might be, but hopefully that'll come across. And you know, I'm a very candid speaker, so if I offend anybody that's not intended, I hope I don't say anything that'll irritate anybody too much. Is it any type of cure for prostate cancer? Yes, there are cures. Prostate cancer, like I said, if you don't, if you die from prostate cancer, you committed suicide in most cases because if caught early, Prostate cancer is treatable or beatable. There's about an 85 to 95 percent cure rate for early stage prostate cancer. So that means if you die from it, you didn't go get screened, and if you got screened, you didn't follow up with your treatments. Okay? If I can get somebody to turn this video on for me for a few minutes, and we can have questions and everything after this is, is running, huh? I've got a question about. Uh yeah, normally, either the doctor, when you go for a PSA, I mean, when you go for, you go consciously to get, I have a PSA as normal. okay, usually the doctor will, before you can get to the PSA, either, either you'll go for a routine checkup, and in the process of drawing blood, to check your blood for cholesterol and AIDS and different things, they'll let you know that your PSA, prostate-specific antigen, they'll let you know that that level is high. It should be somewhere between zero and four. And when it starts getting up past five and six and seven and 10 and stuff like that, that means that your levels are high, which is an <coughs> indicator that you might have a problem with your prostate. It doesn't guarantee it because BPH or benign prostate, prosthetic hypertrophy will also give the symptoms of looking like prostate cancer, as Dr. Mason said, it can, it can appear, you know, the, the symptoms that you have, they can appear that you have prostate cancer, but that's not an indicator of prostate cancer. That just means that you have a problem. 95% of men will have prostate problems. So my question was kind of opposite. Could it, it register normal in the blood test, but you still, still have the cancer? Right, that's yeah. what it is. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'll make sure that everybody understands that. I'm not a doctor, and I'm, you know, I can't say that I'm a doctor. You know, I'm not a doctor, and I'm, you know, I can't speak specifically on what is and what isn't, but through my research, and even like with Dr. Mason, I'm not a doctor, and I'm, you know, I can't speak specifically on what is and what isn't, but through my research, and even like with Dr. Mason saying at 40, 